Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Ochoa, for this wonderful uh, introduction. Thank you, Pedro, for inviting me to this exciting event where science is communicated uh, to the public. I'm facing two problems, I think. One is to uh, follow the huge shoes that uh, Bob left behind him. And the other one is that time becomes late, but I realize that in Spain, dinners never start before 10 p.m. and people have a lot of time. But I promise you, first, to be light in my science, and second, um, to be short. Um, I'm going to do a different job than Bob. I'm not going to tell you about my profession, which is uh, protein degradation. I'm going to entertain you and myself with a problem that I'm sure bothers many of us or bothers uh, you. Um, I'm not promising you any solution, but I think that it's really a problem that bothers also the scientific and the, uh, the health the biomedical community. And obviously, um, the dream of many people is to stay young forever. The question is, what is young? Do we want to stop growing at the age of 15, maybe 25, maybe 35? So here you see there is already a question, what is young? You know, at the Roman time, people used to live about 25 years, so being 40 was already very old. At the beginning of the previous century, of the 20th century, people lived on the average of 50 years. They died mostly of infections, so being 60 was old. In our days, we call old people, people that are 80, 90, maybe 100, but we are still extending our lifespan, and maybe in 100 years, people live for 200 years. So you see that the, already the definition of being young and wanting to live longer life is very relative. It depends when did we live. Did we live during Roman time? Did we live at the turn of the century? Are we living at the turning of the 21st century? Or are we going to live at the, the beginning of the 25th or 26th century? So you see, this is also type of a relative question. 